feeds our soul and we are called as keepers of the earth we are called to speak its sacred words for our children and our children's children we are called as keepers of the earth Wisher, singing Keepers of the Earth, live in our studio. Hello everyone, my name is Lynn Weaver. Welcome to the, another episode of In the Studio. Today our topic is going to be the uh, Davis 2016 Interfaith Conference on Climate Change. And joining me here are two other guests. They are both organizer of the conference, and we have Carol Warren, welcome, Thank you. and Lynn Nittler, welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today, and I'm really looking forward to learning more about the conference. Uh, Lynn, can you tell me when, where, how to register uh, for this? important conference. Oh, I'd be very happy to. Um, it's taking place on March the 5th, a Saturday. Um, the doors open at 8.45 and the conference begins at 9.30 and goes all the way until 3.30. Not to worry, there's lunch included. Um, and the um, location is St. James Catholic Church this year. This is our fourth annual and we rotate location, so we've been at different faith communities, different yes. years. Yes. So the Catholic Church is right near the Veterans Memorial yes. uh, Theater and Complex. And let's see, you asked also how to register. If you go to cooldavis.org and scroll down the news blog, you can find the article on it and all the information you need okay. is there. So uh, Cool Davis org and all the information as well as uh, how to register yes. uh, will be there for you. Thank you so yes. much. Now, Carol, why this conference and why this is an important partnership in a way between a the interfaith community in Davis and the climate change mm -hmm. concerns? Well, I believe that climate consciousness and, and faith have, have really been meeting each other over, over the years. And it's, it's becoming more of a connection, I think, as, as people of faith realize that as we believe that the planet and its beauty and its resources are a gift of the Creator, then people of faith are feeling a, a strong and increasing obligation to protect the planet and to try to do everything that we can to make sure that this great gift is passed on to our children in the same or even a better condition than what we received ourselves. What is the mission of this uh, conference uh, beyond the obvious, uh, you know, reasons about the uh, concern for climate change? Why do we want to include also the uh, churches, the uh, uh, multi-interfaith, uh, uh, to this uh, to be interested in this topic? I think that's a good question for you, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to clarify that while it is an interfaith conference, it is very open to the public. Good. Because I'm glad you we're, that. we're meaning for anyone at all to attend. We have so many speakers and workshops that are of interest to um, anyone with the least concern or even budding interest in the topics of climate change and how we might um, look at it on a personal scale or on an advocacy scale, so anyone is welcome to attend. 
So that's very important. That's very nice. Um, I'm glad you clarified that. And secondly, that. this is put on by our YOLO Interfaith Alliance for Climate Justice. And there are so far 11 faith groups who have joined it and are helping to plan it, but we are wide open. We're trying to bring in more and more faith groups as one way of bringing together people who are, um, frankly, alarmed at what is happening on our planet mm -hmm. and trying to find ways that by putting our energy together, we might be more effective in protecting our planet. Uh, this is great and so far have you had a very good response from the communities and the, uh, the church communities as well? What I can say is in our four years, um, each year our conference has um, brought more people in attending mm -hmm. and more faith groups have joined each mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. So to me that feels like we're building a larger number of people who are saying, we're concerned, how can we get to work on it? Yes, now I was reading about the key speaker of the conference and uh, I would like perhaps our viewers to know a little more about this. Uh, will it be Carol? Mm. Carol. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're really excited this year to have um, Sister Joan Brown as the keynote speaker. Joan is a Franciscan sister from the community in Rochester, Minnesota, but she's been living in Albuquerque for a number of years, and her work job is as director for Interfaith Power and Light. She recently received an award from the White House, uh, one of four people to receive an award as a champion of change uh, for her work on the climate issue. And she was an observer for the Franciscan Federation at the Paris Climate Talks just recently concluded. In December. Yes. yes. And made several presentations to the non-governmental organizations participating there. So we're very excited to have, have her. She grew up on a farm in Kansas. <laughs> and so from a very early age, I think Sister Joan made the connection between our care for and good stewardship of the earth and the water uh, and animals to being able to provide people with, with what they need. And so she's connected to this issue at a very heart level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that people are really looking for today. All of us can read the scientific journals, we, we can see a lot of the bad news about what's happening. And that can be something that just sort of freezes us. Mm -hmm. we, we feel overwhelmed and, and we don't know what to do. And we're, we're looking for ways to connect at a, at a deeper level w with other people. And That's a very good point that you're making there because uh, the scientific facts and the in projected impact of what the climate change is doing to the earth uh, still feels rather remote to a lot of people and cerebral in a way. So give me an example, if you can, about how you feel that, or Joan feels, or everyone feels about uh, our experience of this climate uh, changing. Well, I have a granddaughter yes. who, who is 11 years old and I think about the way things will have changed if, if we don't act by the time that she's my age. I, I worry about her future and will, you know, will there be mass migrations of people? Mm -hmm. will, the place where she lives be very different, and heaven knows after the drought we've been having, mm -hmm. what what will the water situation be like? What, how is her life going to change based on my action or inaction in this present moment? Mm -hmm. And I th I think that's one of the things that people feel a little overwhelmed about and really want to connect with others to work on how. How do I do this? How do I 
change my lifestyle? Mm -hmm. How do I involve my spirit mm -hmm. in, the, in this work? Mm -hmm. And so well, I think... Um, Lynn, uh, Carol gave us uh, an intro to the next question that I have. How can we, give me an example of what, what we can do uh, at our level to uh, help with the changing climate. Uh, I mentioned mm -hmm. that you, uh, maybe I didn't mention, but there is no Meat Monday, one of the... Oh, Meatless uh, Monday. Uh, meatless Monday, yes. Uh, okay. But that's an example, you know, give up eating meat one day a week. And this was done in the Middle Ages before, uh, yes, yeah. for other reasons. Well, actually, um, in our conference, the afternoon is devoted to workshops, and that's the action part of the day. Okay. Um, so we'll hear some stories in the panel of what those panelists are encountering uh, in their successes and challenges with climate, um, climate work. But the afternoon is for us, and we can uh, choose uh, one of ten, two of ten workshops and they're divided. Some of them are very practical, working on your own life and thinking very immediate things that we can do in our own lives on a practical nature. So making our homes more efficient, looking at our transportation, thinking about our consumption, our stuff, our ways that we're wasting. And there are great workshops on how to address some of those issues. And you can choose which one calls to you because you think you could do a little better mm -hmm. in those areas. Mm -hmm. Some of the workshops are on advocacy. You're saying, it's, I'll work on myself, but I, I'm trying to reach my legislator and I don't think I'm effective. Can you give me some help? Yes, we can. We have a good workshop in that arena. Or you know, other ways that you can reach out in a larger scene. And the last of them are actually time for reflection. Mm -hmm. And we've built in some mm -hmm. places where you can go to be with others and reflect on what this experience of living in a time mm -hmm. of climate change is like mm -hmm. and how we can bring that into our hearts and souls and spirits and then live in this world sounds in an very, effective way. It so we're, we've very, got choices yeah. like that yes. for you. It, it sounds very inspiring and uh, extremely uh, useful uh, in I the hope community. So. Yes. So uh, just very quickly, uh, Lorraine, uh, are you going to sing this song at yes, the conference? Yes, I'll be singing this song at the yeah. conference, and I'll be encouraging others to sing right along with me because we're all keepers of the earth, and I think it's really important. Oh, that's wonderful. You, you just, uh, the, the song is beautiful. Thank you. The way you sing it is beautiful. And uh, once again, we're talking about the March 5th, 2016 <laughs> Interfaith Climate Change uh, Conference on Climate Change taking place here in Davis at uh, St. James's. Hmm. And uh, I want to thank you, all of you, uh, for taking part, for the work you do for the community. And uh, good luck <laughs> with the conference again. If you go to cooldavis.org, you'll find all the information that you need there. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, you've been watching in the studio. My name is Lynn Weaver. If you'd like to uh, stream this program, well, first of all, it, uh, it broadcasts on Davis Community Television, Channel 15, but you can also stream it by going to uh, DCTV, davismedia.org, or you can um, also um, watch some of our other programs. Uh, we have fantastic guests and uh, our topics are very interesting. From all of us here, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>